we're here in an undisclosed location. This is my buddy Tony. How you doing? Tony's going to show us all about doing some work with animal hides. Uh, Tony, what, what are you going to show us today? Okay, we're going to show you how to flesh out some deer skin and uh, we're going to take the hair off for doing buck skin. And then we're going to show you how to do some brain tanning, but in place of the brains, we're going to use uh, egg yolks, which is the same fats that help break it down and uh, tan it. So stick around. This is going to be a very informative episode of In the Bush. That's floozy. And the baby. What we got here is a deer hide that the deer we harvested this season. What we're going to do is remove the flesh, the fat, the meat off the hide on the inside. You're just getting it down to the skin then? Yes, we're just going to go down to the skin. And so, uh, you see this, this membrane, you're, you're wanting to get down to that. That draw knife thing you're using there, is that a specific knife for uh, yeah. doing this? Yes, yeah, so this would be a fleshing knife. Okay. Necker knife model 600. It's a good quality one. Good. They're, it's actually dull. Yeah. They won't be sharp. They're actually a, a dull knife. Okay. So it, it's yeah, more just grabbing. Yeah, because you don't want to cut into the skin. Exactly. So, so if, if you see it's more grabbing and yep. pulling it off. Yep. This is where the work is. Yeah. This one has actually been soaking in water because I left it out and it got dry. I see. So when you harvest the deer, and you, uh, you know, you remove the uh, this coat from the deer, uh, is there a certain procedure? What's the first thing you want to do? Do you want to get it in what, with water, or what's the? No, audience? generally you would, uh, when you get it off, what you'd want to do is flesh it like this first. Okay, so you want to do this right away after you this process the animal. Yes, you want to do this right away, and then. At that point, depends if you want hair on or hair off. Uh, if you want hair on, you get it down to this, and then you salt it. Okay. You want to cover the whole thing in salt. Let it sit and let the salt soak into it. And change your salt out periodically, like every day, okay. every other day. And that'll pickle the hide. At that point, the hair won't fall out. It'll stay like that forever. Okay. Then you're going to come back, and I'll show you that later on a skunk I have prepped to that point. Perfect. And then you'll come back with a tanning solution, and once you tan it, that'll be your hair on. If you want to do hair off, what you're going to do after you flesh this, it's, it's roughly the same, but you either want to put it in water, just straight clean water, and you want to change it each day. Depending on temperatures, it's been cool, so it takes a little longer. So you're going for hair off here? Is that... This is going to be hair off, yep. This is going to okay. be buckskin okay. when we're done. So uh, you can either just put it in straight water, change it each day for five to seven days until the hair starts slipping out naturally. And then uh, we'll flip it, and I have another one to that point, and we'll take the hair off, and then you'll be left with just skin. Okay. At that point, you'll want to wring it out, let it dry halfway, and then we'll apply a brain tanning solution. Believe me, there are people much better with a fleshing knife than me. I know guys that get going at this and they're done with me split. There's always a bigger fish. Well, I don't practice that much. <laughs> and then like, we have a bullet hole or a hole here. Yeah. You can sew these up. Okay. Especially if you do a hair on, you'll, you'll never see it. What are your plans? For this particular hide or skin, either leggings or moccasins. I haven't decided. I got three to do, and I was planning on doing hopefully one or two more this year. So I don't know yet. But then after the brain tanning is done, you go into softening it, which is stretching of the skin and softening it up. And then once it's soft, you have to smoke it. And the, okay. s the smoking, once it's smoked, it'll stay soft forever. Because I don't know if you've ever had leather, like a 
they call it vegetable tanning leather like you buy out of a tannery that's done nowadays mm -hmm. if it gets wet it gets hard yeah Bro. yeah well a brain tanned hide that's properly smoked will stay soft forever wet or not yeah okay you can wash them in a yeah because if you're going to use it as clothing it has to be able to withstand moisture. exactly you can throw them in a washing machine yeah and wash them so cool yeah yeah the indians knew what they were doing Okay, let's talk a little bit about your your board that you got going on here. Um, it's be called a fleshing beam. Pretty simple. It's just kind of arched a little bit. Yeah, kind of there's curved. there's better ways Look, to set them up for my height. Basically, or, looks like a small surfboard. Uh huh. Yep. You take a uh, get a piece of log, half round log, slice it off from a uh, wood mill somewhere. You can just round off the tip if you want. I bought this one pre-made. Yeah, and you've yep. uh, you've got it at an angle here. Yeah, up on a stump that you've cut at an angle and you've got it wedged into the ground so it can't move correct they got <clears throat> most people have a better setup with a, a wood beam or something that it's attached to sure so it's, it's more solid and permanent sure but those are people that are doing this all the time, all the time. yeah that is and play around yeah, right and we're looking at this sort of through the bushcraft and survival lens anyway today. So what, I want to know the basics of what it would take if I was in an SHTF type situation and winter was coming and I needed clothes. Well, and uh, honestly, the Indians did this with a with the femur bone of a deer scraped out uh, to a sharp edge and hooked to a handle and they would sit here and just sit on the ground scrape it off like that yeah I mean just any pocket just whatever knife. works right yeah, you whatever. can get any pocket knife anything also all you got to do is scrape that off you want this off and you're wanting down down and the white after you salt them you can come back and it'll be dry at that time you can sand kind of sand or take off. wire wheels yeah. there's a lot of things you can do to sure make it easier to get down but really put a lot of weight into it without tearing it like if you get into a box their skin is thin like a rabbit yeah or bobcats in between so I imagine same concept with any animal just smaller uh, exact same thing you know lighter touches and whatnot <laughs> yep yep and you'll figure out with the fox real quick they got paper thin skin really and, uh, raccoon not so much Raccoon, you can really tear it into them. But you can still get holes through the skin if you're being careful. Sure. But with the deer hide there, it looks like you're able to give it quite quite a bit of pressure. I mean, oh yeah. You're really able to tear into it. Yeah. You can. It's just gotta wait. You gotta be careful on the corners here. Yeah. Because hence the reason it's rounded. Yeah. It, even with the rounded, you'll get into it sharp edge I find myself sure tearing hides so it's my understanding that you primarily want to harvest your hides in the winter time yes absolutely the skins are thicker uh, comes in summertime you know the or early fall you'll harvest an animal and you'll look and the skin will be blue the color of these gloves that's because their skin is thin and you can see the hair through it mainly is what it is and uh, as it goes along it's it thickens up it makes a better sure. hide and the hair is thicker so you know if you're wanting a pelt with hair on maybe you want to make a hat or mittens or whatever nice thick hair is preferable I got two skunks in there they're gonna be a hat. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. You wanna get as much as you can, but you can come back later and sure. clean it up, thin it out more after it's tanned. Yeah. So what we got here is, this is a hide that the 
other side's fleshed, and all the fat's off. Okay. And I've thrown it into a into a tote with water and changed water daily for oh, the last five days, I guess now. So now we're going to do hair it. Okay, same process. Exact same process. So does the process of soaking it for, you said, five days or so? This, this loosens up the hair. You can also, if you want to do, I can't remember the exact numbers, I don't know idea, an ounce or two of hydrated lime to a five-gallon bucket of water. And that'll make the hair slip in like a 24-hour period. Oh, okay. Wow. Hydrated lime. Hydrated lime. Same thing you use to water glass eggs. Let's see, the longer this could probably sit it day or two longer. When it's cold like this, it takes longer. Mm -hmm. But if you get it right, then it will fall right out. And I will say, while you're fleshing your other side, if you're wanting to keep hair in, you need to be a little bit careful because it will start making the hair fall. If you're starting to just rub and rub, oh, yeah. the other side, it can make you're the hair on this hair side. Loose, yeah, yeah, it'll make it come off. I did that on one hair a while back. I got a little overzealous, and I noticed on the other side I had bald spots. But I didn't care because I was wanting the hair off anyway, so. That's more what you ought to be seeing. Yeah. Tells me the enzymes broke down. They break down that membrane right there. See that? It kind of separates it from the yeah, skin. Yeah, it breaks that membrane down and allows it to easily come off. So we're just going to go around and trim up our edges a little bit. Put little bits right on the edge. Kind of worthless skin anyway. Still got tears and jagged edges. Well, you can see how much harder that hair on the edge was to get off too. Yeah, it's not really needed. Well, that's all jagged. Right. You're gonna cut it away later anyway. Right. We're going to mix our eggs and we're going to submerge this in it, soak it in real good, and we're going to leave it there for 24 hours and let that egg let it soak in okay. as good as we can. And then afterwards, we're going to take it out and we're going to take this, we're going to wrap it on a pole, we're going to wring it. So we're going to wring all that material out of it and get as much out of it as we can. And then after that, as it slowly dries, we're going to break the skin. That's where you're stretching it, okay. and pulling it, and you'll see it. You'll pull it, and it'll it'll turn white. You'll see the it break, mm -hmm. and that's what'll make it be soft at that point. And then after that, you can smoke it, and then you have workable leather. So you got, you see the egg yolks, it's more of the fats, which would be the same thing that's in the brains of an animal. Okay. But with CWD going around and whatnot, I kind of felt it best since CWD is found in the brains and in the uh, spinal cord of deer. So I decided I'd just, this time I'd use egg yolks, it's safer. And that's a chronic wasting disease? Correct. Yep, chronic waste disease. All right. Standing here in front of the Biden buggy. Let's go, Brandon. All electric. It's the way to go. So, here's a skunk that we've got here off the place. And uh, I've already fleshed this one out here a while back. And after that, we wanted a hair on. So, after that, what we've done is I've laid this out and I've covered it in salt. And I've left it a couple days. And I shook the salt off of it. Then I did it again. So, twice. So, about four days in salt. And then I've taken it, got all the salt off, 
And you want it almost dry, but you still want it pliable and moist. So, and what we're going to use on this one is a commercial tanning product. But you could also use the egg mixture or a brain tan. It'd be the You'd get the same result in the end. Actually, you get a nicer result probably with the brain tan. But, you know, if you don't have that, want to go that route, there's not advertising this stuff, you know, but it works. Uh, it's just called hide tanning formula. Yeah, it's just a hide tanning formula. There's a bunch of products on the market like this. You're just going to put a liberal. And to be honest with you, looking at it, it's probably eggs. <laughs> you know, so, so all you're going to do is take this and rub it in. Just like this. You're going to make sure you get it everywhere. Really good. Okay. When you're done with this, you're going to let this... So after you fleshed that out, you, you simply salt. did the salt for four days. Yep. And, that's and, just, and actually, that just removes the moisture, correct? Is yeah, that the and, idea? It, and it pickles the hide. Actually, at okay. this stage, if you wanted to take this hide and hang it in your house, it'd stay there for 15 years and the air would never right. fall out. So yeah. You, it, it would be... It's not something you want to take and get weathered. Right. Or anything like that. This is probably going to become a hat, so it's going to have to take weather. But if you mm -hmm. just salt it, it's pickled, it would last forever like that. So if you're just wanting to have a hide hanging on your wall, you're good at that point. But yes, just simply salt it. Then you're going to rub this in, try to keep it off the hair. Now, are you going to have to use two hides to get a full hat? Yes, at least. I got another one in the basement already done. Yeah. So yeah. Just are you going piece. off of a pattern then? Nah, I'm going to wing it. You're going to wing it? They oh, have patterns out cool. there, but I kind of like just going doing my own thing. Sure. So, uh... That's it. And all you're going to do, you're going to let this sit. And as this dries, hanging in your basement or someplace, as this dries, you're going to want to work that skin and break it okay. and keep stretching it. And and if it gets too soft or too hard, I mean, excuse me, if it gets too hard, add a little bit of water, okay. soften it up, and that's it. You're done. That's a tanned hide right there. You just, you just have to let this sit for, you know, in a day or so. How often do you work with it during that time? Just every day, a couple times a day maybe. Okay. Go and check and it. How many days are you going to let it? I'm going to leave it for uh, 24 hours and I'll come back to it tomorrow about this time. And then I'll start. You'll start. I'll start working a little bit. It. And see how dry this is. Mm -hmm. This brand it stays kind of sticky. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's it. So, that's all there is to it. I mean, that's, it's pretty simple. So, how many days will it take of you know messing around with it and once moving it's dry, it and, once it's dry it's done okay so whenever it dries so whenever, depending okay. on the environment you have it typical three days four yeah, days probably three days you know i mean if you have it in your garage and it's cool it might take four or five days if you have it in your basement where it's nice and warm it might take sure. two okay and that's where it says you don't if it starts to get hard before you soft it add water and keep it moist until you broke it where it stays soft when it's dry okay if that makes sense. Yeah. When it's completely dry, it should be soft. If it's hard when it's completely dry, moisten it just a little bit, make it soft, and then start stretching and breaking it. And how would you do that? Just by rubbing a little water into it? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Just a little hot water, warm water, just just a little. You don't want yeah. to be crazy. Just a little bit. Just, just put some on soft. your fingertips and just kind of. Yep. Just make it soft and then just start stretching and pulling on it. And it depends on what you want to do. You know, that might be as much as you want. If you don't care right. that the hide is soft, you let that dry and you're done. Okay. Finish. So. Now we got our buckskin, so we got. So this is our imitation brains here. Yeah, this is our imitation brains. You got 12 egg yolks, one half cup of olive oil. We're mixing this in with yeah, it's about a gallon and a half of water. Is what you want. Get all that in there. I don't know if you can yeah, see that, but it's, well. it's it, if you were to ever mix brains and water, it looks real similar. Okay. Most people haven't really played, played with brains much. <laughs> and you know, uh, we talked about the risk of CWD. You can, if you're wanting to do brain tanning, because brain tanning is a quality tan that's kind of hard to replace or duplicate with anything. I mean, this will do a good job. But you can go to your local butcher and buy cow brains, any brain. It doesn't matter okay. what. They don't have to be deer. Any brain will work. It's the fats and, that are in it. 
Now, is the risk in just the handling of the deer brains? Is that where you risk getting this? Spinal fluid, deer brains is where CWD is most prevalent in the animal. Okay. But I, they, they recommend if your deer tests positive, you don't eat it. It's, to my knowledge, never been transferred to humans. But like I said earlier, I don't want to be the monkey that changes that whole thing. So. But I mean, how do you know you're not sending every deer off to get checked? No, but you can for free if you want. Oh, okay. State will, but so that's what you got. Just like a milky water. Yeah. And we're just gonna take our hide. I'm gonna tell you this hide's a little wet. We're pressed for time. Sure. Okay, so ideally what you'd want to be doing with this hide is getting as much of the water out of it as you could first. Okay. And let it dry to about two thirds dry. We're still pliable. Be before you before I do this, we're, we're kind of wet. Okay, so ideally you would let this hang here okay. until this was like two thirds dry. But since time dictates our days, we're gonna do this, call it good, and see what happens. Hey, we only got a few hours in it. What's the worst happening if you ruin it? <laughs> but anyway, you're just gonna. Don't ruin it on account of me. <laughs> uh, you just put this in here and. Honestly, what I'll probably do is, uh, you want this in here for 24 hours, I'll probably give it a little extra just because it was extra wet. Because the whole purpose sure. is allowing it to have time for that egg yolk and the fats to absorb, to into, absorb into it. Yeah, so that's yeah. where you want it. So that's like why you dry it first. Because, yeah. yeah, so you're just slowing down the process maybe by doing it wet. Yeah. It'll still happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll just, I'll well, just work a little more. You know, my first thought was, well, you're putting it in a gallon and a half of water. Why exactly. would it have to be dry first? It doesn't. It's just how quick it absorbs. Yeah. You know, if you got a wet sponge, yeah. it's already wet. Yeah, so it's just, you just want it to soak up that egg. Yeah, so I'll just work a little bit more. It'll be fine. So that's it. We're just going to get it and all the way is, through it. And that is warm it. water, folks. Yeah. You want your water hot, but not so hot it would burn you. Yeah. But hot, not just warm. You want it hot. Maybe like what you would run your dishwater. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, Something at least that's hot, hot, but not burning your hands. Exactly, off. It ain't gonna bless you. But you want as hot a shower as you ever like to take. That's it. We're gonna let that soak, and when we're done with this, we'll take it out, and you'll start wringing it, and stretching it, wringing it, stretching it, and pulling it. And that's what'll break it and make it soft. And it's the same theory as with that. Is you have to break it while it's, well it's uh, you want to break it while it's semi wet. It's, it's easier. It's pliable. Mm -hmm. If it's completely dry and hard, it's you can do it, but it, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It makes it harder work. It's easier to break it when it's moist. And then once it's broke, you smoke it, and it stays off forever. Unfortunately, that's all the footage Tony and I got that day. But the next step in the process of having workable leather would be to break the hide. Breaking the hide can be done by hand, but is a rather labor-intensive process. It is much easier to use a machine that looks something like a giant rock tumbler. This allows you to work the hide for a long period of time, breaking it and softening it. The last step would be to smoke the hide. That can be done very simply by suspending your hide with a tripod or a tree limb or a pulley system over some coals for an extended period of time. What this does is gives the individual fibers of the hide a sort of waterproof coating. If you don't smoke your hide, you kind of end up at step one again with rawhide if it ever gets wet. That's it for now, but Tony and I are going to get together again in the future and demonstrate breaking the hide and smoking the hide. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time in the bush.